welcome back to the spy flight on YouTube. That looks like a really old A310 and we are at a really cool little airport. I hope it's pronounced correctly, Basil Mulhouse. Hello, my name is Dave. Welcome to the YouTube channel. Welcome if you're new. This is uh, basically the YouTube channel that's sort of a companion to the big uh, live stream over on Twitch. And this is sort of like my chance to do a complete jump down as many rabbit holes as I possibly can flight in a single airplane. So you can see a few things behind the scenes of uh, flight planning and everything. And now is a perfect time to be doing this because uh, a lot of us got our slot reservations uh, times for uh, cross the pond and cross the pond is definitely one of those attention to detail kinds of flights especially if you're looking for uh, making it through the event and having everything go smooth and by the numbers so for today we are doing a complete flight in the Innibills a310 this is a really good long distance airplane should be capable you have other choices you could do the salty mod and the 747 there are a number of modifications to the 787 uh, too so those are some good ones you could use for cross the pond but the a310 is going to be my choice lots more buttons to play with there this is a complete cold and dark flight including all of the flight planning the only thing that i know that we're doing is basil mulhouse to uh, nice france uh so this uh, airplane is also free in microsoft flight simulator i think that's cool so what am i using for today's flight i'll use navigraph and simbrief i've also made the switch over to volanta so i'm using that for some flight tracking we'll also use sky vector and as i mentioned we're going to be doing um full flight planning uh, as well. So what, are you, what should you do? If you are new to the uh, spy flight on YouTube, this is one of those fly along with me kinds of videos. So what you can do is hit pause right now on YouTube and uh, go ahead and fire up your own airplane at Basil Mulhouse. I'll give you the ICAOs in just a minute. The cool part about doing it this way is you get to pause and restart and replay a video. If maybe I was pushing a button, and, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, what did you just push there? Uh, that's a really good way to do that because you can't really do that over on Twitch. I also suggest that after you do a flight with me in a couple of days or something like that, do another flight out of your hometown airport in the same airplane. That's probably going to help out uh, just a little bit too. And of course, if you feel like it, join us over on Twitch for the spy flights. All right, enough yapping. Let's go ahead and start doing a little bit of uh, flight planning and everything. So these are the things that the real world pilots are going to do long before they go out to the airplane. So let's go over here. And this is Sky Vector. So over on Sky Vector, I've gone and I've even uh, got a link in the description for Sky Vector. And this is our basic route of flight. Basil Mulhouse down to Nice, France. Looks like we're going to start off with some cloudy skies and go to sunny skies by the beach. I'm all about some sunny skies by the beach. Also, if you look in the description, you're going to see something that looks a little bit like this. This is what I call the flight strip. Okay, this is my little notepad of all the notes that I need. Now, the one that you're looking at right now is a little more filled out. So we're going to fill this out as we go along. And these are some of the things that you need to kind of keep in mind if you'd like to get through a cross the pond event and be smooth and by the numbers. You might notice that uh, along with the departure and arrival airport, I have my gate number filled in, gate 20. It's good to know what gate you're at for their events like this. And then the other thing is my departure time. 1335 Zulu. Now, obviously, this is YouTube, so for you, the weather and the time and all of that's going to be different, but 1335 Zulu is uh, my departure time that I've got for today's flight. Right now, we've got about 40 minutes to departure time about 40 minutes coming close to 35 so we got to start moving around and acting like we're going to do something here so we've already seen this let's go over to uh, simbrief right now and this is the simbrief main flight planning page it's the re reworked version and i've got to say huge fan of what they've done this is really really nice it's easy to use so let's go ahead and we're going to go right in the middle create a new flight all right, so here's our new flight. We're going to fly PAA, Pan American World Airlines. I'm going to do my flight number, which is United uh, 441, not United. But 441 is just the number that I've been using, and it's a lot easier. Time out for a quick rabbit hole. So let's say that you're not using your favorite flight number or something like that. What's a secret that you can use? 
I kid you not, real world pilots say <laughs> this is what they use in the real cockpit. A sticky note and a Sharpie to write down their flight number. So while you know, real world pilots are still going to be flying for probably the same airlines, they don't need to remember that, oh, I'm flying for Speedbird today or United or something. They know that. But the number is going to change. And so this is a way to remember how your number is. And they, they, they say they stick it right on the control panel. So there is your secret weapon if you're going to have to use uh, do another flight plan. Okay, into that rabbit hole. Yeah, Pan American 441, our departure airport is going to be LFSB. LFSB. So, okay, now's the time for you to put, start plugging your data into. Uh, we are going to Nice, France. LFMN. I'm going to spare you all the Nice jokes because there are a ton of them. Let's go ahead and do our departure time. And our departure time is already uh, coming close to... Uh, uh, Simbrief is already giving us our half an hour wake up call. So 1335 and apply. Now we're going to get our airframe. You can search by aircraft type or an airframe that you've already got set up. I've already got an A310 already set up for Pan Am. So that's just going to go and uh, plug that in. If not, just go do aircraft type A310 or whichever airplane you're flying and that should work for you. I generally leave most of this alone. The, um, the, these airplanes don't do cost index, I don't think. You can do Mach 80 or Mach 0.79, Mach 0.8 and Mach 80, Mach 0.80. That's usually what I'm going to fly along at uh, within this airplane. I'm going to use the Lido style, the default style of flight plan. My units, I'm going to switch these to kilograms. This is an Airbus. We do KG here. Uh, taxi in and out time. Okay, here's a good one for you. So, taxi in and out time. I would basically go and on VATSIM, I'm gonna, I'd kick that number up to 45 minutes, okay? I would also do your taxi in time to about 10 to 15, so I would add to that. I'm just flying along by myself today, so 20 and eight work good. Contingency and reserve fuel. All right, if you're going to be flying the cross the pond, this is a number where I'm going to kick it up to maybe even 45 minutes for cross the pond, maybe even an hour. Okay, the real world pilots don't have to do that, but in cross the pond, they're jam they're trying to jam far more airplanes into the airspace than the systems allow. So the the whole deal behind that is add contingency and reserve. We don't need to today. We'll just go with default, but on those on those events this is where i'm going to add fuel uh block time is an hour and 20 minutes gate to gate departure runway is 33 arrival runway is 04 i have found out that uh the new sim brief is really doing a great job of picking runways so now you may need to change that if we were on uh, vat sim and if we were going to be flying i would be going to another website called SimAware, and i would be going and having a quick look to see is the airport does there is there an ADIS? Well, there isn't one here uh, at um, there isn't one here uh, for us at Basil Mulhouse. But as an example, uh, Frankfurt has Tower and ADIS up, so you could clip just hover over that, and it will show you your departure runway. 25 center and 18 is what they're doing at Frankfurt. So that way you could choose the correct airport if you're already doing VATSIM stuff. But for today. We're doing good, so let's just go ahead and go with what Simbrief says. And now let's generate flight. It's that easy, that easy. So I'm really enjoying this new interface. It's been awesome. Okay, so here's a bunch of data. I'm going to do what's called view the PDF. And here is the Lido style of flight plan. This seems to be what a lot of people are using for your basic flight plan, real world too. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this to a, pla to a place on my desktop that I call active plan. It's PDF file, I just save the current flight to that one and that way I don't have to do a whole lot of deletes and everything else. So we've got that one. Back here to SimBrief, if we were on VATSIM, we could pre-file. So that's a thing we could do. We could also download the flight plans. We don't have to with this airplane because we can, I'll show you how we can go and get it through the airplane itself. Departure airport. So this is a really cool thing we can do. We can click show details and see where it says METAR. We're gonna go ahead and copy the METAR and I'm gonna go and grab my flight notes and I'm gonna put it here under departure.
Oh, that's really awesome. Now we could go and hide those details, and let's go to the uh, uh, arrival airport, Nice, and we can go ahead and, oh my gosh, look at that, copy the details and paste. This is so nice of them to be able to do that so that we can just go and plug the METARs right in there. If we were on VATSIM right now, we would also be getting the VATSIM or maybe even the IVAO ATIS. You would be able to read those in the departure and arrival airports. And again, this is also where you could pre-file. We're not going to bother pre-filing. Now, there's no cost to your system to uh, do anything other than just uh, leave this website up. So I'm going to leave the uh, website SimBrief. I'm going to leave the uh, PDF over here, and I'm going to leave Sky Vector. All those three I'm going to leave over and minimize them over on the other screen. Next thing we'll do is let's go and get that PDF I saved. And there is our PDF file. I'm also going to go and start plugging in a little bit of data out of this big flight plan. Now, this is me making a little bit of extra work for myself. Uh, I'm going to eventually try and get to a point where maybe I don't even need this anymore. But right now, I still need some flight notes, so there you go. First thing, cruise system. This is where you would get your cost index. In this case, uh, CI. I'm going to go and replace the CI numbers with M80, Mach 8, Mach 0.8. Air distance is 449 miles. So there is our distance. I'm going to go and go 449, and I'm just going to go and start filling in some of the data that I'm using as far as the rabbit holes that I'm jumping down. So we have air distance. How about zero fuel weight? Going to need to know a zero fuel weight eventually. So let's come over here, and we're going to just replace those zeros too. Fuel. So 11559, control C. And this is, again, this is just the way that I go and plan a flight. I also keep everything um, pretty quick, pretty um, on this little uh, notepad here. I put all of this data in the notepad because it just makes life so much easier. And I can type in and out of the notepad. Uh, right now, I'm cheap. I'm a live streamer trying to survive, so you know I can't annotate my. Um, uh, I can't afford to annotate uh, PDFs right now. So maybe someday. The only other thing we're going to do is our. Uh, we do have a step climb. And our top climb is going to be flight level 190. So 19. And those are the things that I take off of page one. Next page. This is going to give me my alternate, which is LFLL. And I'm going to drop, drop this down here. LFLL. Now it's going to give me my complete route. And I'm going to go and take my complete route. And I'm going to put this over here in this box. And this also puts in a um, puts in a hard return, so I'm also going to just go and click that up there, and there's my route. Stuff's coming together here. So this is what we need. Let's go to the last page, and some of the last data that I'm going to grab, it's going to be an hour and 20 minutes. So again, this is probably a little bit too much work in some cases. So that's why I'm hopefully, when I can start annotating PDFs and stuff like that, I'm going to probably start eliminating this. 216, we have 216 brave souls flying with us today. Our cargo for today is going to be 5.4. There we go. And as you can see, things are slowly coming together. The last thing that I'll do is grab departure and arrival times. I'm not going to make you sit here and uh, watch me do all of them, but these are our departure and arrival times that I will go. And usually I will fill the whole thing out. Like I said, I'm not going to make you see all of that today. This is not all about cutting and pasting. And there it is. My flight data is now all set. So I'm going to put that over on the other screen and I'm going to hit save. Let's go ahead and uh, minimize that. And it's time to go and do charts. Here is also the new Navigraph. They've really done a lot of improvements in Navigraph right now. Out freaking standing. Let's go ahead and do flights. And we're going to import the flight from SimBrief. This is what we call building up your stack of charts. In the old days, the pilots had a stack of aviation charts in the order that they needed it. 
Okay, so we're not using paper charts anymore, but I'm gonna stack up all of my data along the bottom here in the order that I need it. Now, you can automatically sync. The sync doesn't always work perfectly for you, so I just choose to do this myself. That way I also have the opportunity to familiarize myself with the route. And that's a real help, especially if you're gonna be on a big VATSIM event. So let's start off with Basil Mulhouse. We're gonna to go to charts, we're gonna to go to taxi, and let's go and see, and the first thing I need is parking stands. So I'm gonna put the little pinpoint, uh, do the little uh, uh, thumbtack, and if you look in here, there are parking stands, and you can see we're at gate 20, outstanding. Next thing I need is an airport route. And there is my airport route map as I slowly build this. There we are with the airport. Our departure is going to be the Lummel 7 November. So over on SIDS, what I will do is I will just do 7N. And that's going to really cut down the list of uh, departures. So we've got there, up oh, there's, there's, uh, there's Lummel right there. So that's how I, uh, an easy way to find. And you know, there's some airports that have like two columns of SIDS and stars. So this just makes your life a little easier. And as you can see, there is our departure right there. And so we're gonna take off, we're gonna make a little bit of a turn, we're gonna come out there and uh, we're going to exit at Torpa. So this is our departure out of Basil Mulhouse. And, and so this way you get to go and have a look at certain things. Uh, do we have any altitudes? Yes, you got to be above 1,900 feet before we make the turn. And we also have an initial climb clearance of 7,000 feet. These are things that you're going to have to take a look at anyway. So this is another reason why I build up the charts manually. So I give myself a chance to just review these. Let's go to airports and we're going to go to Nice charts the first thing i'm going to need is a star and according to the flight plan we're doing the abdil 7r so in filter 7r and it looks like they're all a 7r okay so they're not that many and sometimes you know searches don't you know work well but 90 percent of the time they do here is abdil 7r so it's right at the top and so we're gonna just look at this. I'm also gonna pin it there. We're gonna come in via the Abdil checkpoint. We're gonna come down here. We gotta be above, uh, below 1, 000, uh, 16,000 at Amfu. We have a slowdown at Tipic to 250 knots below flight level 120. And this is gonna put us out at the initial approach fix of the MUS, uh, the, uh, the MUS uh, non-directional beacon right here. So let's go to uh, the approach page. And we are coming in on runway zero four right. So zero four right is an ILS, and this is the final approach fix. So usually that means that there's going to be an initial approach. So let's see what this does. Does this give us, does this pick us up at MUS? Mm, this one doesn't pick us up at MUS very well. So this is final approach for the ILS. There's an RNAV, there's minimums. Hmm, do we have, ooh, initial approach all runways. See, some of these airports are tricky like that. And let's see, what does this do? At MUS, so here we are at MUS, we're supposed to exit MUS on a, on a heading of zero nine zero degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna save that. And now we'll go up here to zero four right. And now we can get the final approach. So there is not going to be, an, an the initial approach is just gonna have us do 090, and then we'll intercept the localizer and come on in here. Our platform altitude is 4,000 feet. Our minimums for a category C airplane is gonna be 360 feet above sea level. And the other thing to look at here is go to the center of the airport and look for this offset localizer. This used to just strike fear into my heart. No, it doesn't anymore, but offset localizer means this is not gonna line us up perfectly for the runway. So we need to be ready for an offset localizer. And again, it's not that hard. Again, it did used to strike fear into my heart, but not anymore. Okay, the next thing we need is the airport map. And then the last thing we need, do we have parking stands? So we have parking stands. Let's just go over here. Here's all sorts of parking stands. There's great places to park here. 
Uh, if you happen to know where your favorite airline parks, and if you feel like jotting down a gate number, especially in an event like Cross the Pond, the first thing that ground control is going to ask you when you land after an eight-hour flight is, say parking, is what they will say. Important safety tip, when ATC says say parking or say altitude or anything, do not come back and say the word parking or altitude. Yes, it sounds funny. They have no sense of humor about that whatsoever. So you, what they really want you to do is give them a gate. I'm going to go and just choose gate 44. So I'm going to go ahead and put 044 in my gate number. That way, when it's time to say parking, I can say gate 44. And if it's available, they'll give it to you. If it's not available, then it's their problem to choose something more appropriate. But at least you can answer the question. And now, all of a sudden, you can see all of these charts are lined up in the order that I need them. Life has become really, really easy. And here's the reason why you want to make your life really, really easy. Things like cross the pond and cross the land and um, all the other cross the whatevers, they are complex events with a ton of airplanes. And the other, and so you're, you're, you're in the middle of all these airplanes. You are also one person in a two-person cockpit and you have no help at all except yourself. That's why it is that I'm all about making things as easy as I possibly can. Okay, so we're done. It's time for the pilots to go and walk down the jetway. Holy cats, we don't have a jetway. What are we going to do? Well, most airports have got, G if you have GSX, you can go and operate your jetway. So if you want to do a little bit of immersion, you can go ahead and do that. Let's just go ahead and go with their choice. And now we're going to get ourselves a jetway. And if you don't hear anything, it's probably because your sounds are down like mine are. Ah, we can hear the uh, wind, and here comes our jetway. Uh, this airplane, I think when a jetway approaches and attaches to the airplane, it will open your front door for you. And there is our jetway. And uh, one of the cool things about this, uh, uh, the uh, European jetways is they have clear sides, so you can look and see the cool stuff. Come on, American jetways, don't make us look at a metal wall. I know it's all about security, but there you go. So let's go ahead and hop in the best seat in the house. Last little flight sim thing I'm going to do before. Oh, actually two things. First of all, uh, your flight tracker. Don't forget to activate your flight tracker. So here's Volanta. I'm going to add the flight plan, import from SimBrief. All of these things should be connected. And then if you zoom in here, you can see, ah, my flight plan is all set up. And now from here on out, I don't have to do anything else with Volanta. I'm going to move it to the other screen. I'm going to minimize it, and life is perfect. Okay. And then the last little flight simmer thing that I'm going to do is kind of go down and move my camera view like this. And I'm going to grab the stick, move it forward, move it back, right, left. I'm going to twist my uh, stick. You can see as I twist it, my uh, stick is getting noisy. I'm going to have to uh, tear out my stick and clean it soon, and that's scary. I'm going to uh, just move the rudder pedals. Looking over here, we're going to go ahead and move my throttles forward. Make sure my reversers work. I'm going to also move my uh, controls, and all of my controls are working. My parking brakes are set, and then that's the last thing that I will do. Also, if you have a chance, your airplane of choice if you can get yourself a uh, printed flight plan. This one, uh, flight plan, uh, checklist. So if you look over here, this one you can see it's wrapped in plastic, um, like Laura Palmer on Twin Peaks. But anyway, uh, wrapped in plastic, and this thing here, I went on to online and I did A320 space checklist space PDF. And then I was able to go and print it. It's about the only thing I print anymore is a checklist every now and then. That way I have a physical checklist just like the pilots have, and I can follow along, and I will set that just right there, and it's all ready to go. And there we are. So what are we at? We are at 24 minutes into the recording. We are about 25 minutes from departure. Okay, so we're a little bit behind schedule on, on this. 
you really want to start your flight about an hour before your scheduled departure time on an event like Cross the Pond or something like that. I'm running a little bit late because I'm going a little slow because I'm yapping away here on YouTube, but there you go. All right, next steps in the process, it's time to go over to the electronic flight bag. We're gonna go to the plug, and you can see it's already got the 1L door. You don't need to do the jetway, but I am gonna put chocks in place. I'm gonna go forward, aft, and bulk cargo. And we're gonna just go ahead and open those. You don't need to with this airplane. I'm just doing a little bit of immersion because, hey, it's flight sim, I like doing the immersion thing. So I don't need to do a jetway. It's already got my 1L open for me. 1L is the uh, front door that you probably walk through as a passenger. And the next thing for us to do is go to the weight and balance page. And this has become so easy to load in this airplane. And basically we need this page right here. This is page three on the Lido style. We need passengers, cargo, and fuel. Okay, and you can see it's already got the decimal points in the right place for you. So let's go ahead and we're gonna do passengers first, and that's 216. So do passengers, click the zero, 216, confirm. Cargo, click it, click the zero, look at the flight plan, 5.4, confirm. Fuel, click the zero, Look at your fuel, it's 11.6, 11.6, confirm. The last thing I'll do on something like a, a across the pond, a big flight, I'm gonna just look at those numbers one last time, verify that I've got especially the fuel, then you can hit apply. See the little uh, center of gravity indicator here? Watch what happens to that when I hit apply. Do you see it moved it a little bit there? That means your airplane's loaded. And now you hit live and that locks the numbers in and it's time to do airplane things. Now we actually get to turn power on the airplane. From this point in time, your airplane is loaded. You don't have to do anything else to load the A310. That's it. With GSX, you could have people walk down the jetway. I don't do that much very, I, I need to learn how to manage it a little bit better. So I don't do it very much. Okay, you know how to turn on an Airbus, right? Batteries, one, two, three. Let's go ahead and do external power. Let's go and turn on the galley power because we must have hot coffee. We're gonna come down here. I'm going to do no smoking. I'm gonna come up here. If it's nighttime, I'm gonna turn on the dome light and I'm gonna go down here. Nav and logo light systems. There's two systems, they're identical. Look at the date. Today is the 20th. That is an even day, so I use the even version. Nav and logo light system number two. That's my little way to do those. Um, some pilots, if the uh, captain is flying the airplane, they'll use logo light system number one. If the first officer is flying, they'll use logo light system number two. Uh, nav and logo. And what we've done is we've turned the little lights on on the wingtips. So the wingtip lights are now on. You can see the red over there, and it should also have the white light on the tail. Um, where's the white light? I know there's probably a white light there. I don't see it, but it would also turn on the, oh, uh, it's got logo lights on. So you can see these, the, the logo lights are on. I don't see a white light on the tail, but it would also turn on that light too, wherever it is modeled on the airplane. Don't see it so much for that. Oh, this is really pretty cool. We got a little bit of, uh, this is a nicely done airport. This is a payware airport from the people who make uh, a GSX, FSDT, Flight Sim Dream Team. So this is a nice little payware airport. The one we're going to is free. Uh, it should be already uh, set up for you. All right, so next step in the process, we've got basic power turned on the airplane. We're gonna come over here. Let's go to menu and ACARS, and if you've typed in your SIM brief into uh, the electronic flight bag, it knows to go and get your, your name. I think you also type, your, your, type your, your name in here, and once it knows your uh, username for SIM brief, uh, it, it, uh, it will uh, go and get your route, and it just did. So with that, let's slide over here, LFSB to LFMN, that's looking good. So my next step in the process is I come out here, and we zoom in, and we go to the top and we go to nav. Battery operation should li initially light up, 
then that light goes out and then a line mode goes on. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can slide over and do the one over the uh, first officer's head seat, battery operation, and then we can come over here and do the one in the middle. And I do all three like that. Okay, so those are good. If you wanna hop down a few more rabbit holes, you could also do the uh, loop test here for uh, engine one fire. You should see the squib lights go on, hold the button down, and you'll see loop A, loop B, and the lights go on. So you could do your fire tests for all three, uh, for uh, engine number two and also the APU if you wanted to. I don't think that the airplane will fall out of the sky if you're running late and you choose not to do them all. In an Airbus, you hit ground control, this on the flight recorder. This means it's recording us right now in case we screw up and blow up the plane. You know, oh, I hit the uh, self-destruct button. Sorry, my bad. Oxygen, let's do low pressure supply, turn that on. And also I will start turning on the window heaters and things are going good. Next thing I'll do is look down here and I'm gonna come over here and there's these two knobs right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn these all the way up. That's the backlighting on the pedestal. And then this is the backlighting on the upper panel. If we're gonna be flying at night, I'll slide up here and do the left and right displays. I will begin to turn these down. We're flying in daytime, so we don't need to do that at the moment. The next thing I'll do is come over here and look down by the pilot's left knee. Here is uh, integrated lighting for the pilot. If it's gonna be nighttime, I'll also do about two clicks on the flood switch. So there's uh, captain and center instrument lights and main floods. If you want, you could also go and turn up the lights for the first officer. We'll let the first officer do that. And then the last thing is the, cent the knob under here, and that's gonna turn up all the backlighting on the um, autopilot. Notice we don't have speed, altitude, and heading select numbers in there. Not to panic, those will pop up in a bit. Now that we've done that, we can come over here and start doing stuff. First thing is hit the, it says align IRS. Do yourself a favor, click align IRS, and then clear the uh, reminder. Otherwise, sometimes you forget. Uh, do you remember uh, our alternate? Neither do I, that's why I wrote it down over here, LFLL. -L -L. And that's one of the things that I do is LFLL. -L -L. Is I don't, if it's, if it's written down someplace, I will go and I will look it up as, as opposed to reminding myself what to do. Okay, I just do that. Uh, and I think the real pilots do it that way too. Cost index. Okay, my cost index, I have, this is, I, this is where I totally fail you. I have no idea what to put in there. I just put in 60 because I don't think these old airplanes had cost index, at least not according to my flight plan, uh, not my flight planner. So, you know, we didn't get a cost index. We're going at Mach 8, zero. So I just put in 60 and it doesn't bother me. Uh, flight number, we are going to be uh, a Pan American, PAA, flight 441. There we go. It does have my cruise flight level at 180, but there is a step climb in there. So my step climb, is, RPL is 190. So we can go ahead and leave that there at the moment. Okay, so all is right with the world. Passengers should be all boarded. Fuel should be all boarded. We're aligning everything. If you are uh, about 10 minutes from departure, we could go ahead and hit the inner tank pump, number two, and hit the master switch for the APU, and we're gonna go ahead and start that. While that's starting up, we can go ahead and start doing our flight plan. So there we go, let's do F plan and LFSB and SID, and we know we're going to be departing thanks to looking at our flight plan and our flight notes off of runway 33. Again, I'm not trusting my memory with this sort of thing. We're doing the uh, Lummel 7 November, Lumi 7N, there you go. There's a Lassa up here too. You want Lumi 7N, don't be fooled. Some of those can be awfully tricky because they look very similar. Init, uh, insert, excuse me, and then there's our flight plan. There's top of climb, there's Lummel, Torpa, L-O, it should be L-O-L -L if it's my flight. 
RLP, RLP, re recognize this one here. That's our step climb, flight level 190. So we need to be prepared to do a step climb there. DJL, Bob Z, Danbo, LSC, Luxem, Abdil. Oh, top of descent, Abdil. Hey, we're coming to the end. See where it says LFMN? Let's go ahead and already plug in what data we have. We are expecting the ILS for runway four right, four right. We are doing the Abdil 7 Romeo. Abby DI Alba. Ooh. Let's go and uh, look at the actual chart. Sometimes this is a little weird. ABDI. We're doing Abdil, so ABDI 7R. ABD. This is the one. So when they're really close, should do yourself a favor and just make sure you're set. Now it says must. We do know that we're going to come out at must. And all of that is good. Let's insert that. Nav accuracy has been upgraded. Let's clear that. GPS primary is set. That's good too. And all of these numbers are starting to come together. Let's go back over here to the init page. And by now our APU should be started. So what we can do is come over here and I'm gonna turn on the APU bleed. You'll hear some more fans starting to pick up. And you'll also hear the APU is going outside the airplane. Hey, things are slowly coming together. We're almost ready to go. Now let's go ahead and do a page that I used to forget all the time, but in all Airbuses, it's called the init page B page. And you can tell that there's a second page here on the old bus here because it's on the init page, you see the little arrow to the right. That means we can go and do next page. And we're going to fill out three pieces of information here. We're gonna do our zero fuel weight, our center of gravity, and block fuel, okay? First slap, uh, zero fuel weight. We get that over here, and it's right here on the weight and balance page of the electronic flight bag. ZFW should be 102.8. It should be relatively close to your zero fuel weight here. So there's our zero fuel, 102,680. These are not going to be exact. See, it's an estimate. So go with the exact number that you have on the electronic flight bag. 102.8 is the number we need. So let's come on down here. And we're going to go 102.8. And then we'll come in here and put it at to ZFW. Next, we got to go back here and get a center of gravity. And that's the number down here underneath the little airplane, 25.8. So 25.8, 25.8 is our center of gravity. And that goes right in here, ZFW CG. Now then, fuel. We've had the APU up and running and stuff, so I like to take the fuel right off the gas gauge. And the gas gauge is going to be right here, but you can see we've got ECAM stuff uh, indicated. So I'm going to turn off the doors and I'm going to hit clear. And now we'll try and turn off the door again. And now if we look, you can see the gas gauge right there, 11.8, 11.6. We've used a little fuel. So let's go and put that number here for block fuel. So 11. 0.6 and we're going to put that in block fuel and now you can see it filled it all out and did all and did math for us too it does a little math isn't that nice everything is looking really good up here there's nothing much really to do at the moment so all is right with the world if you're starting to get close to your departure time maybe now's a good time to do seat belts passengers are aboard and out here we could go ahead and start closing some doors. So we could come over here to the plug. And if you did your uh, bulk cargo, aft cargo and forward cargo, we could start closing those doors. We might even seriously consider retracting the jetway. And that's gonna close our main 1L door. And we do that by going to GSX and operate the jetways. It's, it's closing our main cabin door and it will retract the jetway. 
Okay, so these are now happening. Let's go ahead and get uh, takeoff speeds. So we need a number off of this, and what we need is our takeoff gross weight, TOGWO, 114.0. So 114.0 in your head, come back over here, hit the airplane, and take that 114.0, is that right? Yeah, 114.0, 114.0. Point zero, and put that in your weight page. And there you go. Now, if you've already done your runways, all you need to do is click runway length and your runway length will automatically appear here unless you're gonna do a um, intersection departure. And then if you feel like doing math, you could do math there. Same deal for your runway heading, click that in there too. And then all of that data should be updated. Do you want anti-ice off, air conditioning on, and calculate. Oh, our weight exceeds maximum takeoff weight. <gasps> oh, that's because I don't know how to hit a decimal point. Let's click this again. One, one, four, point, zero. Now let's try to calculate. Oh gee, see what happens? So if you have a typo like that, you can go back and fix it. After I hit calculate, I'm going to go ahead and look at the upper panel here. And if you've got, um, if the artificial horizon is there, uh, you know that uh, your IRSs are all aligned. So we can come up here and do pitch trim and yaw dampers and the auto thrust system. If those things pop down, what that basically is telling you is you haven't gone and uh, finished aligning your IRSs. These do not stay on until your IRSs are aligned. We've also got the APU on and the APU generator light is out. So I can turn off external power and we can come over here to the plug and I am going to get rid of my GPU. Slowly getting the airplane ready to go. Okay, let's go back to uh, the little airplane here. And we can see we're gonna flex to 57 degrees. So main panel, and we're going to flex to 57. So flex and 57, we'll put that in there. There's 57. Landing elevation. So go to your chart, and we're gonna go to the airport for Nice. And our landing elevation is a whopping 12 feet above sea level. So all you have is uh, options of 50 or more. So now we're already at 100 feet. You do a lot of rounding with the old airplanes, so just leave it at zero. Life is good. Okay, all of this is slowly coming together, and now you could also see that we have data up here in the flight, uh, in the autopilot. So we know we're going to be taking off here at uh, Basil Mulhouse on runway 33. So runway 33, our heading is 332 degrees. So 332 goes over here. So we're gonna dial that in right now. There's 35, there is 332. If you don't remember, always go and check your departure. And the departure says our initial climb clearance is gonna be 7,000 feet. So we're gonna go ahead and dial in 7,000. If you want, click the top part of the altitude and then you uh, can change it by uh, thousands. So those two numbers are set. Now we can come over here and get V speeds. 138 and 138 is V1 and VR. So take off and approach. And V1 and VR, notice how V2 is already set at 100. So let's go get these 138 and 138. So 138, we can set that in V1. And 138, we can set that in there. And this one we can't change. It says FCU. No, 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 it's not giving you the middle finger. We're not gonna tell jokes like that. What it is telling you is you have to set V2 165 in the flight control unit. 165. So there we go. And now all of this is set up and ready to go. It's time to get a pushback truck. So let's go back to GSX. And we're gonna go down here and prepare for pushback and departure. 
as we look over here, let's go to the little uh, plug. And is there anything in still enunciated? Yes, chocks are. Are parking brakes set? They are. I'm going to go and pull my chocks. And let's see. By now, you can see there's our crew chief. Hi, crew chief. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. Well, hello. We're ready for pushback. Convenient the way that is. While they're doing that, grab your printed checklist and let's do the before start checks. Our cockpit prep is done. Passenger signs are on. Fuel quantity verified 11.6. There is an important number, especially for long haul flights. It's T off fuel. T off fuel says 1116. Look down here. We're at 1116. We're really close to our takeoff fuel line. So we probably should have added a little bit more. I've had the AP running. Navigation is set. Landing elevation is set. Altimeters. <gasps> haven't set those. Those are 1022. So let's see. Oh, it wants us to uh, make a choice here. So let's see. We're going to go to runway 33. So we want uh, nose to the right, tail to the left. Nose right, tail left. Okay. Locking gear. So while they're locking the gear, our altimeter is 1022. 1022. I did not add any extra fuel. I am right on the line as far as takeoff fuel right now. 116. Very close to the line. Um, if we were on VATS, if we were on VATSIM, if we're on a long haul, I would have added a ton of extra fuel. But right now, obviously, we're pretty close. Now, we'll Please catch up once breaks. we get in the air. We'll, we'll catch up when we get in the air, but there you go. Uh, okay, last little bits of the checklist. Windows and doors are closed. The beacon is not on, so the beacon is now on. The parking brake is now set, and we're ready to release the parking brake. Parking brake is released. Commencing push. All engines clear, start at will. All right, time to start up the airplane. And if you've got a couple of cabin views, you can look outside. And we can go ahead and start the airplane. All right, let's get the rest of our fuel pumps on. Fuel pumps going on. And we can start an airplane. We're going to use starter system A. So let's go over here. A ignition goes to system A, starter number two. It goes from arm to open. If you look down here, the N2 is starting to rise. 20% on this engine. So 20%, there's 10, 11, 12. If you've got the Thrustmaster uh, Airbus uh, throttles, those start levers work really good in this airplane. So fuel use just became uh, active and more N2. EGT is going up. We'll also check a look, take a look at the oil. Set parking brakes. Ooh, set parking brakes. There we go. Waiting your confirmation for a good engine start. Ooh, look at that. This is what, it, and, and a lot of people will ask over on the spy flight on Twitch. Is GSX worth it? I say for most pushbacks, it's, that's the best part of GSX. It is a great pushback engine. And it does some really nice visual immersion, uh, visual immersion things too. We got a good start on this engine. So let's go up here, go to GSX. You have to click it twice. Confirm good engine start. To ground. We have a good engine start. Now go back up here, click the GSX and, and, and uh, you know, deselect it is what you need to do. All right, and now that we've got a good engine start there, let's go ahead, start engine number one. It goes from arm to start, and there goes the N2 on engine number one. So takeoff fuel is now a little bit below what we need. We're going to make it up in the air here with this airplane, but again, that's, that is now officially below takeoff fuel. The fuel we need for takeoff, not taxi, but takeoff. So technically, I'm a little bit low at the moment. I'm not worried for a short hop like this because we're going to be no fine. Disconnected. Bypass been removed. Okay, we'll come Left over is here. Clear. Right is clear. We'll slide over there. There goes this. We'll wait for our salute and release from guidance. And everything looks good there. That engine's coming up. 
And here comes our crew chief. Now might be a good time for a sip of your uh, in-flight coffee. Okay, they're going to hold up the... Uh, okay, he's hol holding up the, uh, the gear pin. And then in a second, he's going to hold, hold it up again and wave. We're good. We can now depart the scene of the crime. After start checklist, pitch trim. Uh, we're going to find pitch trim on weight and balance. And that's the second number by CG. It's up 1.0. Important safety tip on this airplane. If you're just starting it up, look at my look at my trim right now. It's up five. Man, if you don't forget if you don't forget your 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 trim, it really is going to mess you up on your takeoff roll. Be sure you do that one. So pitch trim. Let's also go ahead and do rudder trim reset. I'm being a terrible pilot. I should have squawked mode Charlie on the taxiways. I didn't do that. Uh, speed brakes, spoilers are armed. Slats and flaps, 15 and 15. So that's basically flaps two, setting number two. And you can see that these are starting to go down. And you can come back here and you can see them starting to go down too. Okay, there's slats and flaps. Uh, ECAM status is clear. Nothing enunciated saying bad things. Uh, Anti-ice is not needed. We've gotten our hand signal. After start check is good. It is taxi time. Last thing that I really like to do before taxi time is I'll go over to Navigraph. And as you can see over here, we got some pretty good indicators here, uh, taxi. So we're gonna go and taxi forward. Uh, and we're gonna come over here and get on Bravo and go to runway 33. This is a nice map. I really like to go over here and I like to center the airplane and I zoom all the way in. And if you've been seeing all of these really, really great taxi maps, this is it. This is how you get the really awesome taxi maps. And if you've got the little target with the airplane in the middle, it will do be, it becomes a moving map for you. I set that right off to the side and that's my moving map. It's really, really nice. Okay, last things we're gonna do up here, let's go ahead and get the ignition back to normal. Ignition is off. We're gonna arm the emergency exit lights, turn off the APU bleed. Oops, no, we're going to turn off the APU bleed. I just turned off uh, all the lights. I dimmed the lights there. So APU bleed is off. We're gonna turn on the propeters because nobody's under the airplane anymore. We're gonna come over here and do taxi lights. We're going to come over here and sit up straight, feet on the rudder pedals, toe brakes are on, parking brakes are off, release the toe brakes. And the best way to tell if you're moving is look off to the side, add a little bit of thrust. This airplane does a nice thrust idle taxi. Ah, we're moving. So I did add just a little bit of thrust to get us going and then back to idle. Okay, we got kind of a tight little turn here. I'm gonna go ahead and go out just a little bit. We're gonna go forward a bit. And I'm gonna use nose wheel steering because we got about a 90 degree turn to make over here. If we were on VATSIM, of course, we would not be choosing our own taxi path. They would tell us which way to go. I just feel like this one is a little bit wider than the other one. So this would be better for a, uh, for a wide body. And we'll look over here. Is there another airplane? Even if you're not flying on VATSIM, you know, look at the other, look for other airplanes. And we'll start our turn around here. Gently does it for sure. I was talking a little bit about taxi speeds and stuff. It seems painfully slow, but this is a big jet in a really tight area. So I really am not doing IndyCar racing on these turns. And then we'll turn the other way. Taxi speed in close to the terminal, 10 knots. Pretty much it's 10 knots in other places too. 
I think the blue line on the taxi line is for uh, jumbo jets and wide bodies. Okay, so all of that looks good. We've done the after start check. Let's go ahead and do the before start check while we're going here. So we need to come down here and we're going to do flight controls and everything but the rudder. Elevator is set. Roll is set. And so we got all those. And so flight controls are checked and set. Uh, briefing has been done, although it's been done a little bit poorly. We're a little bit slow. I'm going to add just a touch of throttle right now. Slats and flaps are confirmed 15 and 15. Performance, check and read. V1, 138. Rotate at 138. V2 is 165. Takeoff config. There is a takeoff config check. It's a little awkward. So the button is down here on the co-pilot side under the throttles. You look at the uh, main ECAM screen. Click it and hold it. If it's green, it'll say config, con config is good. And then transponder. Our transponder is set to 2000. Let's see, we're in Europe, it should be 1000. So 1000 and we are on transponder right now. And we've picked up a little speed, so I'm gonna go back to uh, engine idle. And just a gentle little taxi like this does wonders with this airplane. As we're approaching the uh, runway, uh, choice here is do we have uh, one of those departures where there's no vectors or anything? If there's no vectors, I'll hit profile and nav. If there's vectors, I'll hit profile and heading select. This is also a good opportunity to hit uh, the uh, constraint page. Runway ahead, we've just cleared ourselves to go and cross uh, runway 25 here. Oh, we got a little bit of a breeze here. The uh, wind sock is being a little socky right now. Socky. Anyhow, a little bit of a breeze for takeoff today. Good visual indicator. Now, our ground speed is now 18 knots. We got a 90 degree turn here. So ever so gently, I'm gonna tap on my brakes and get down to about 10 knots for our little turn. There's 10 knots. Still wants to speed up here. ATC is just called. We are cleared to line up and wait. So let's go and do strobes on. And I'm going to drop the uh, landing lights out of the bottom of the airplane. I'm not going to turn it on. Final uh, takeoff checklist uh, below the line. Cabin is secured. TCAS goes to Terra. TCAS is on. And packs are on. Ignition is not needed. Anti-ice is off. We are clear to go. Checklist is done. Out we go here. So we're cleared to line up and wait on runway 33. At this point in time, uh, over here on this, I will start zooming this out a little bit and slide it over. And then come back here. Runway ahead, 3-3, three, three, perfect. We are taxiing at about seven knots right now. If you look outside the airplane, I mean, this is kind of what it looks like as a passenger, right? So there's our runway ahead. We have strobes flashing, we're all ready to go. There's our little turn there, so we can start doing a little bit of a turn like this. Taxi skills while you're in a passenger seat are very important for a flight simmer. And I obviously taxied a little bit over, so we'll get over there. ATC just called, we're clear to go. Ready? So landing lights up. And let's go ahead, we're pretty much uh, on the runway. Takeoff time. I usually go throttles up to about 24, 25, make sure that they're steady. And then I'll go to the first detent on the Airbus or about 40%. As soon as I see those, I have a uh, takeoff button, takeoff thrust, I just activated it. We're gonna need a little bit of left rudder, I think. 
I think we've gotten some updates on the airplane, and this airplane's a little bit quieter. 80 knots. Oh, this is an Airbus. They do 100 knots. One of the things I really wish developers, there's 100 knots. I really wish developers would put air, airspeed callouts on airplanes. We need to be looking down the runway. And V1 and rotate. There's V1 and rotate. Following my flight directors. Positive rate, gear. Climbing a little bit high. A nice departure, gears going up. So long, Basil Mulhouse, we will be back. Looks like kind of a cool little valley to live in. That river there looks nice. Okay, if you're still flying by hand, which I recommend in this airplane, it's fun. Uh, you're gonna need to go and uh, lower the nose. Because this automatically goes to climb power for you. Still flying the, um, still flying the uh, flight directors here. We're about ready to make a turn to the left though. Climbing a little bit too steeply. But you can see the flight director slightly off to the side. And eventually it should start our turn here in just a little bit. Generally, uh, as we're, okay, there goes the flight director, start our turn. Start our turn. And an incredible view outside the airplane. Wow. Up, oh, not climbing fast enough. Hey, flaps up. Flaps uh, ten, uh, 15 and zero. We're starting our acceleration. Passing 5,000 feet, ATC has said we're cleared up to 17,000 feet. And flaps up. Not climbing fast enough. Watch my flight directors. Oh my goodness. Oh, we're also a little bit off that line too. Got some clouds ahead. Should have been a good pilot. Uh, temperature outside the airplane. Up, roll out. I'm just looking at the flight plan to remind myself. Flight level 180. Man, climbing like a banshee here. There we go, that's a little better. So we're cleared to flight level 180. There's 10,000 feet. So landing lights can go off. Nose light is off, but let's flip the switch. Cabin call, just do, do no smoking for 10,000 feet. And we are heading to SB705. So now let's just go ahead and center the flight directors. We've had our fun. AP, engage. There we go. Let the AP go and do its thing. And we get to look outside. Speed brakes are not needed. Disarmed. Landing gear. This is a older Airbus. The older buses, there is a neutral position. So neutral in a Boeing, it's off. Neutral here. Uh, let's see, transition altitude out here. Didn't check that. 7,000 feet, so we've passed transition. Let's go ahead and do standard altimeter. Speed is now coming up. And the airplane's being a very good airplane. We could do the after takeoff uh, and climb checklist. So slats and flaps are up. Landing gear is up and neutral. Packs are on, altimeters are set. After takeoff checklist is done. All continues to be right with the world. 
And if you've got your moving map set, we slowly start zooming it out. You can see we're coming up to a, uh, some lines here for ATC. That's a good indicator for you that if you're on VATSIM, you might be expecting a handoff. So be ready for a handoff as you approach those lines. And everything is perfectly good here. One thing I could have done a little better, I could have gone over here and I could have switched the transponder to above. I'm also going to change my range to maximum range uh, here on the TCAS. So now we're at 12 miles and I'm looking above the airplane as we climb. And oh my gosh, we have sunny skies ahead as we head to the sunny beaches of Nice. And here is our turn. Always fun to come out here and uh, do a uh, wing view as you're making a turn. Views are always really pretty good. We've got a couple of bounces out there right now, passing 16,000 feet. Now remember, we did have a step climb today. So our step climb is to flight level 190 at RLP. So we can come over here and let's do a flight plan flight plan RLP is when we're going to go to flight level 190 we're out of uh, out of the area here so we could also go from airport uh, from constraints to airport and I usually draw uh, run the map either 30 to 60 we should have also probably done either terrain terrain radar and out we go. Coming up on Torpa. And our departure is really, really been nice. As we're coming over here, the next thing I will do is go to the cloud. And update the METARs. LFMN. The last METAR we got was at 1330 Zulu. The clock says it's 1350. That's a correct METAR. So temperature 16. 4 knots, 170. The altimeter is 1018. So we're looking really good as far as our arrival. It, we're, we're set to approach. I'm going to go to progress over here. Now, remember I was talking about takeoff fuel and stuff. So one of the things to do is to come over here and hit the fuel prediction button. And it says our estimated fuel on board when we land at Nice is 3.2. Over here, it says final reserve and alternate is 4.4. Oh my gosh, is it time to panic yet? Not in this airplane. So we're still climbing. So when we're done with the climb and we've gone past a checkpoint, let's look at that number again. Now, if it's still low, then at that point in time, it's sort of like, you know, okay, maybe we're getting close to time to panic here. But for now, I'm not going to worry too much about it. And if you boarded extra fuel, what I call VATSIM fuel, you'd be well ahead of that number anyway. It's important to uh, keep an eye up oh, 18,000 feet, 18,000 feet. We are in cruise mode. So once we pass Torpa here, let's go and hit that, let's go and hit that fuel button again and see if we've got reasons to panic. I don't think there's gonna to be too many reasons to panic right now. Uh, let's see, it also tells us that we are 420 miles to our destination. We are just passing Torpa. So as we pass Torpa, I'm going to go ahead and let the computers kind of catch up, do some math. This is an old airplane, you know, it kind of creaks along a little bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and just let it have a second, catch its breath, you know, become one with the sky. And now that we've passed that, let's go and do that little, let's go check fuel again and see how we're doing. Fuel prediction, 3.4. It's starting to go up a little bit. It's trying to go to 3.5. So it's going up ever so slightly. Now then, we're only, our, our optimum fuel cruise is flight level 380. 
today's flight is such a short flight that we only boarded, you know, we're only cruising at 190. So we're not doing a big long cruise. If we were on uh, across the pond or something, I would want to be as close to the optimum flight level. We're gonna lose a little bit of fuel, but I think we're gonna make it. We should be fine. There is a button that we could go and do. We have 412 miles to our destination. We can go and do the descent forecast. So we're at flight level 190. If we come over here to the flight plan and go past the, the data and go over here, here is the wind information and here is our descent. So how about we can take the last three lines? So at flight level 200, the winds are 357 at 36. So we could go and put those in. Flight level 200, this helps the computer better calculate your descent. So 200, it's 357 degrees at 36 knots. So we'll put that at the top. The next one we can choose is 150, 150. Whoops, gotta hit the five before the zero. 150, be sure to do the slashes. The winds now are 006 at 27 knots. And then the lowest one we have is flight level 100 slash the winds are 011 and they are at nine knots. Not that big bad windy. As for winds at the airport, we can come over here. It's 170 at four. So 170 at four knots. And now we've gone and done our descent forecast. We can go back to progress and all seems to be good there. Uh, let's see, we are now going to RESPO. So we are now going to the RESPO checklist uh, checkpoint. Remember, we're gonna step climb to flight level 190 at RLP. So after RESPO, as we get to RLP, we'll climb to uh, flight level 190. We also will need to go in and change on the init page our cruise altitude to 190 at that point. And now we're just, uh, just kind of cruising here. So if this is the first time that you've done uh, one of the uh, YouTube videos, generally what I do is once I get to cruise, what I will do is stop the video. It's kind of early in the morning for me, so I'll go over, grab a second cup of coffee. And uh, then when we get to, uh, if we look over on the flight plan, you'll see as we go down, it says top of descent, Ah, top of descent. It's supposed to happen at 1443 Zulu time on the airplane. So uh, over here, I might make the map a little bit bigger to 60 miles. And when top of descent starts to show up here, when that top of descent hockey stick is between 60 and 40 miles. So what I do is I stop recording the video so that you don't have to sit here and listen to me mindlessly yak. You get to sit, grab yourself a little coffee, Look out the window, the scenery is mostly spectacular. It certainly isn't that way today because of the clouds, but you get to enjoy the airplane for a little bit. And then when your top of descent hockey stick gets between the 60 miles and 40, start your video again, and we'll start doing our preparations for landing. And that's kind of how, uh, how I usually do these, so you don't have to sit. And like I said, uh, sit and, and listen to mindless chatter. So between 60 and 40 miles, start your video back up then.
Hey, welcome back to the uh, pre-recorded version of uh, the 757 Spy Flight. Good to see you. Thank you for coming on back here. Okay, so there is a difference if you are a live streamer or a YouTube content creator. Special update here. There's a difference between the live button on Twitch and the record button here on the YouTube videos. Um, I, I, I thought I'd run into a problem. I didn't run into a problem, but I started recording and I thought I started recording, but instead I hit the live button on uh, Twitch. So if you happen to be watching Twitch and all of a sudden you saw the spy flight pop up and me confessing to being a total idiot, uh, it's because I am, I hit the wrong button button so I'm going to maybe change the stream deck and have them look a little bit different or something like that it was a little bit embarrassing for sure anyhow we are uh, just getting ready to uh, come on in here I did think that I had a problem and I started my descent way too soon I've since recovered my fuel has recovered too uh, which I was really pretty surprised about. So uh, my fuel is uh, at 3.0, got enough fuel to make it. So that's good news over there. Over here, I also have gone and I uh, put LFMN here on my bearing and distance. This is just another indicator to show you what, if we had to fly right to the airport, how do we do it? Well, 130 for 121 miles. Um, we are 165 miles left to go here. The descent forecast is good. There is one thing that I have neglected to do, and that's put in the ILS. This airplane, you have to put it in manually. So the uh, ILS is 110.7. So we're going to go 110.7. This, uh, this uh, radio tunes awfully quickly. There we go. Our inbound course is going to be 041 degrees. So 041, and that's the, this here. So ILS, don't be confused by the VORs on either side. So 041, 23041. And then minimums for our landing today are going to be, for a Category C airplane, 360. We are Category 3, so 360 goes over here. Take off and approach. So. 360 goes up here. MDA goes right there. All of that's good. Let's go back to progress over here. And down we go. Uh, we have a top of descent hockey stick showing up here. It's 60 miles. So we are 60 miles away. You can see it's sh showing up there very nicely. Let's uh, do ourselves a favor. Let's go and do a direct to. Let's do direct to Jural. And how did I get into trouble earlier? Well, I was doing a bunch of direct twos to speed this up and I wasn't paying attention. So direct to Jural and insert. Okay, did I do that? You gotta actually hit the insert button. There we go. And here's our turn. And top of the set didn't change much. And I thought that I had lost at the top of descent, so I started going down a little bit sooner than I, I, I had to. Again, I like to leave mess ups like this in these YouTube videos. You can actually cover, recover from these things. Look, I hit the wrong button all the time. Real world pilots don't do that, but you know, I hit the wrong button all the time and you can, you know, if you have to drop back and punt and save the flight, you don't have to exit out of the sim and start all over again. Coming in here at MUS, we're going to be at above flight level 80. So let's go ahead and we're going to go over here and dial in 8,000 feet. As you can see, I did do the step climb and that one worked. Now I did go over here and I have also gone out of profile uh, for all of my changes. Let's go back into profile and see what the airplane does here. I think it's going to start uh, start me descending now. And let's see what it... Yep, it's going to start me descending right now because I was already in descent mode. But I think it's going to recover and it's going to put us at about 8,000 feet at MUS. It's going to go up and down a little bit, but we should be in good shape. Let's go over here and hit Update METAR. And this one is updated as of 1400 Zulu. 
It is currently 1433, so that's the latest METAR for us right now. And we'll just start our descent a little bit early. I think we should, uh, it'll hit the profile just fine. As we get lower though, we'll have to take, uh, 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 clean it all up. Let's also hit the top of the uh, heading select button. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna have to change my buttons down here on Stream Deck. I'm going to make the go live button a little bit different so that doesn't happen again. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I may have to put something stronger in the coffee cup a little bit later on to deal with that little bit of humiliation. But those are those those are things that happen if you are going to create content on YouTube, live stream on Twitch, or do anything other than, you know, stay hidden in the back of the closet, which is where I want to go about now. Ah, coffee, that makes stuff feel better. Let's go on up here and let's do seat belts. We did turn seat belts off earlier. I also neglected to, uh, I guess I neglected to do the APU. So no wonder my fuel was a little bit low, but once I shut that down, boy, that really took care of things too. I guess there isn't a checklist item for the APU, so, and I was kind of counting, you know, relying a little bit too much on the checklist there. Seat belts are now on. And it's beautiful outside the airplane. By the way, if you haven't been to the cabin of uh, this airplane, I don't know if you know this, but if you go and sit in one of the seats, so there's in-flight entertainment in the seat back, and it gives you the outside air temperature, the altitude, vertical speed, ground speed, heading, distance to destination, and the ETA for the passengers, and it does it in both metric and imperial which is nice, so 142 miles, 24 minutes of flying time, a 226 kilometers. So that one is kind of cool. And if you pull back and just have a little bit of a look-see, so you can kind of set yourself up and you can see the seatbelt light is off, on, and no smoking is on too. Cabin on this airplane's actually done pretty nicely. It's one of the neat things about this. Okay, our vertical deviation's relatively good. It looks like we might be a little bit low. Let's do another direct two. Let's go direct to AMFU. So direct to AMFU. Since I'm just going direct to crazy today, one of the reasons to do a lot of direct twos and things like that is because uh, one of the things is, is over on a VATSIM event and stuff, particularly VATSIM events, where there's a lot of airplanes, you will get a lot of direct twos. They will try and move you ahead if they possibly can. Uh, a, they're trying to help you save fuel, but B, they're trying to get you out of the way. So you gotta do that too. Okay, this looks good, this looks good. Our altitudes are still kind of bouncing around all over the place, let's reset the heading bug. I do that fairly religiously on this airplane. And part of the reason is, is as we get closer and closer, instead of relying on profile for the descent, I generally will take it out of profile and do level change and manage my own speed, which is what the real pilots say they do too. In fact, why don't we do that now? Because we're gonna be a little low, so level change. And I'm gonna reduce my speed to about 320 and I'm going to reduce my uh, rate of descent to about minus four, 400 feet per minute, because we're, uh, we're supposed to be below 1600, below 1200, but you saw the little arc there. That little arc was gonna put us, uh, um, I wanted to put that little, um, the little banana a little bit closer to the approach and we do have some slightly gusty winds so it's a little bouncy here so i kind of wanted to be a little bit more of a control freak on our descent we're actually a little low at the moment so i kind of wanted to catch that up a bit part of the reason there's some hills around basil uh, around nice and so i didn't want to be a uh, low on the descent i wanted to be closer to it and clearly uh profile was not gonna do the trick so we're gonna do this. Let's also go ahead and turn on terrain radar. There are some hills here and we need to be ready for um, hill avoidance. Uh, we don't want to hit there. Okay, so you can see now the uh, little 
banana line is, well, it's kind of all over the place, but it's getting closer. We're going to definitely below, so let's go at about 500 feet per minute and see how that works for us. We're at 320 knots. We'll also, oh, uh, we can see we've showed up here too. And we're kind of off the course heading because again, we did a direct two. So let's see, we have air speeds to worry about. We need to worry about 250 knots at Tippic. So maybe what we'll also do is I'm going to go from 320. I'm going to go to 310. It's also, particularly on a flight like this, we're not on VATSIM, we're not a multiplayer. You know, one of the things you can do is actually experiment like this. This is a great way to learn a little bit about your airplane. Clearly, I should experiment with my go live button a little bit. That might help out a lot. That would be a good thing for me to do is experiment. Yes. Okay, uh, one of the things that you do in Airbuses is you do keep an eye on the brake accumulator pressure. Make sure it's kind of close to the green zone. If you, especially as we start to get into the world of failures and stuff like that, that will be an important thing to do. Okay, it looks like we're gonna be above 8,000 feet at must just fine. So our descent is actually a little bit better. We're still a little low at the moment, but I'm not gonna stress too much. We have to be above flight, uh, below flight level 160, coming up here at AMFU. I think we might want to go ahead and go to 60 miles. So here's AMFU. We're going to be below 16. We don't have any aboves here at the moment, and we have a 250 knot speed restriction at Tippic. So that's good too. All is right with the world. We can go back over here to progress. Let's see how my fuel is just because it's good to check. We are gonna have 3.3 .3 in the tanks when we land. Again, the flight plan I think was 3.7. Oh no, not even close, 4.4. So we are actually gonna be below final reserve and alternate on this one. Technically, that's not good. Um, I did a little bit of a deviation from the flight plan, took off a little bit low so, boy, I'm just a flying violation today. <laughs> but you can still have fun with Microsoft Flight Simulator and being a, be a flying, you know, you know, I will have a phone number to call when I get on the ground. <laughs> oh, can't wait for that. Um, man, yes, the, 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 the flying violations department will be breaking down the door any moment right now. Boy, understand that you've been taken off without enough fuel. <laughs> We're going to have to take you down for question. We also understand you don't know the difference between record and live. <laughs> Son, you are in such big trouble. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I think today is going to be uh, requiring uh, adult beverage. Sit out on the back porch. Enjoy some sunshine today. We're definitely going to need a little bit of that. Okay, 12,000. We're doing still pretty good. We have to be below 12,000 feet at Tippic. We're, we're well within the constraints of all of this. Now we do see some hills beginning to get a little bit higher. I'm going to reduce this to four, 400 feet per minute. It's gonna make reducing our speed to 250 knots a lot easier. But again, I'd really like to get that vertical deviation a little bit closer because, you know, this is YouTube, this is a semi-family channel. We don't want to be very deviant, do we? The uh, checklist for this airplane uh, starts, does approach and then landing. So we're not even close to being approached, so we don't have to worry about that. Other things that we can freak out about, here we are coming in a little bit closer to AMFU. We got a couple twists and turns to MUS. We can zoom in just a little bit here and uh, use the moving map on this. And I really like the moving map coming on in here. This helps out a little bit. So slide that over there and I make that just right off to the side. So that's good. It's a, it, especially on a VATSIM event, that is something that's gonna make life a little bit nicer too. Nothing else to worry about down here. 
Um, probably not going to need speed brakes, so it's a little bit soon to do speed brakes and auto brakes and all those sorts of things. So I guess what we have here now is a little bit of be patient time, which certainly as a flight simmer, none of us are good at. Fuel prediction, that's going to hold steady back on progress. We are 65 miles to our destination or 53 miles if we just go straight to it. So all of that is awesome. Over here on takeoff and approach, our VAP speed is set to be 133. If we wanted to change our landing configuration, right now we're gonna be 20 and 20. We could change it to 30 and 40 if we wanted to. And I think everything else is in really pretty decent shape at the moment. We're going to be above 1,600 feet here. Now, another thing, if we wanted to just sit here and experiment, so we're at 1,100 feet right now. It's going to stop us at 8,000, so we'll just continue to let us drop down here. Let's go ahead, and we're going to go to 300 feet per minute to continue to slow that rate of descent as we get closer to those hills. And the good news is, is Nice is actually landing on the fours today. If we were going the other way, we would have even steeper hills. And that uh, tends to be uh, a little bit entertaining too. A nice turn. Now's a great time to come back to the cabin, look out the window. Always fun to go look out the window on a turn. And the scenery is just absolutely amazing too. That's, that's one of the things. Okay, so Microsoft Flight Simulator's been around a while. I have to say the scenery is still just impressive. Just impressive as hell. Okay, this is looking good. So we're coming up on Tripic. We do have a slowdown. So let's go ahead and we're going to reset the heading select and set our uh, speed down to 250 and let the airplane slow us down. Because we're only going down at about 300 feet per minute, my guess is we're going to slow down rather quickly. Oh yes, we are. So we should hit that two, uh, what do we have? We've got nine miles to Tippic. We're at 290 knots. We're not gonna bust that speed restriction. So it's, you know, one less crime I have to answer for today. Everything else is good. Uh, transition, let's see if we can't stay on transition today. So looking over here at the ILS, transition around here is 5,000 feet. So we'll call it 5,000. That's altitude. Transition level is sometimes usually about 1,000 feet above that. So about 6,000 feet will be ready for that. Our speed is now down to 250. There's 10,000 feet. We can go do landing lights. And we'll do the nose light. Let's do cabin call. And that's just for me. I will go and do the no smoking lights. And that will uh, call the cabin and give that, ring the bell back in the cabin. That lets them know it's a sterile cockpit. And we're 250, we're at 10,000 feet. We have to be below 12,000 feet. So we're legal on that one. After we pass uh, Mus over here, uh, let's see, altitude after Mus is, there's a, a 1,144 foot peak over here, 090. Uh, does it really give us any final altitudes or anything like that? So over here, the next thing we would set is probably our final plunge altitude, also known as platform altitude to 4,000. Okay, there's tipping. Now we're going to Mus. And above 12,000 feet, we, uh, the wind obviously changed a little bit, so that's changed that a little bit. Oh, we can see the coast. How about that? We can see the coast now. This is definitely a part of the world that I, uh, if I ever get to go and do some traveling, I definitely want to check out. So over here on the descent, it's above 8,000 here. 
you can see after that 8,000, I think we've got 4,000 over here and 200 knots. So we'll continue, we'll, we'll uh, after that, uh-oh, uh-oh, look at this. The de vertical deviation has now changed. So now it's time to go and start descending like we mean it. Now we gotta descend like we mean it. See, we're, we're, we're completely on the other side of everything today. Absolutely terrible. Okay, so we're gonna make that above 8,000 feet. Let's go ahead and set that platform altitude now and we'll continue down to 4,000 here, which is the 4,000 is gonna be over here, above 4,000 here after MUS. And then we intercept here, and the intercept I believe is a speed restriction, it says 200 knots, 3,000 at nearest. So there's Moss. I think we're in good shape. What else, can, how else can we hum, uh, I humiliate myself today? Let's go ahead and get ILS active. And I'm doing this for both the captain and the first officer in case we need to do category two. And there is Moss. So let's go to 20 miles and we're continuing it down. We have a speed restriction coming up of 4,000. And you see, this is only gonna go and turn us to that heading of 090. Remember, we also had a, um, we had a um, uh, vectors. So this is gonna get us to 090. And we need to go and let's do heading select for 090. So we can vector ourselves over here. We could go over to CI, we could do a direct to CI 04 right. Ah, it even told us about the discontinuity. So CI04 right, direct to that and insert. Let's come on up here, go back to navigation, and we have a speed restriction coming up of 200 knots. So let's go ahead and do that. We're starting to get a little closer to the approach now. I don't think we're gonna need speed brakes. So let's go and arm speed brakes for the approach. That's right here, lift it up and we'll also do auto brakes low. This airplane stops very nicely. We do have localizers starting to show up, no glide slope, and we're gonna be above 4,000 feet at FI04. Uh, so we have to be above 4,000 feet there, so life is good on that. Here are some of those hills that I was worried about, so we're clearly not gonna run into the hills. All is good up here. So we don't need to worry about that. Seat belts are on, lights are on. Life is good there. We could probably even do our approach checklist right now. So passenger signs are on. The briefing has been done, but very poorly today. Ecam status. Nothing is showing up on the Ecam as a problem. So life is good there. Altimeters are not set. That was supposed to be at, what was it supposed to be? 6,000, 5,000 feet. So let's see, altimeters, let's come over here, hit update METAR again, and the altimeter is 1018. So we're close enough, how about 1018 right now? 1018, altimeters are set. Uh, minimums have been set, so minimums are down here, and there's the MDA, ignition is not needed, the landing elevation is set, the approach checklist is done. And we're uh, approaching glide slope and localizer. Let's increase our rate of descent just a little bit so that we can stay slightly below the glide slope here. I'd rather stay slightly below the glide slope on this one. It's easier to, um, it's easier to snag them both. And let's go ahead and actually hit the land button right now. And that's gonna go ahead and set us all up on the ILS. We could also, we're at 200 knots now, so we can go and do flaps 15 and zero. And in fact, I think we could do 15 and 15. We're close enough. And if you feel like it, it's fun to go out and look at the, uh, it's fun to go look at the flaps. 
The leading edge slats are particularly uh, good on this airplane too. I think this might be a little bit low. I think I really should be more like this for an adult looking out that window. Looking good here, so we're slightly below. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce my rate of descent a bit. That helps me keep control of my speed here. So about 10,000 feet up, we are snagging localizer. There is, it's see the localizer is now green and it has a star. You see glide slope here, GS is blue. So that means that it's set to grab the uh, glide slope and localizer for us. Looks like we are about 15 miles out. There's the DME to the ILS, so 15 miles out. Start looking around. Do we see anything resembling an airport? Yep, there it is right there. And remember, this is an offset localizer. So we've got a little gentle turn to final as we're coming on in. Now might be a good time. ATC might say 180 miles till five miles DME. So 180 miles to five miles DME. Speed's coming down, so we can probably do another notch of flaps as we get closer. Older airplane might need a little bit more time getting established. In, so let's go ahead and do landing gear. Gear going down. And now's a good time to go outside and have a look at the airplane outside. And see wheels going down. Here comes gear. Coming up on 10 mile finals. Life is good there. How about flaps 20 and 20? Here comes more flaps and more slats. I think slats, uh, no slats will go to 30 and final flaps are gonna be 40. Now, if you look carefully, so we're heading straight down the road, right? But you can clearly see the offset on the localizer here. You really see it well. Now is also an incredibly good time to come over here. Remind yourself we're gonna be on the right side runway and then the last thing that I will do is take a look at the airport. For right, we are exiting to the left. So I'm briefing us uh, as we land. And now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom this map in tighter so that I can use that as a ground chart. And all is right with the world. And we are 10 miles uh, DME, nine miles actually. Remind yourself of the VAP speed, 132. It's an old clunky airplane. I'm gonna add a little bit to that. How about 135 for our landing speed? And nobody's in the pattern. ATC says our speed's at our discretion. So let's just go and do that right now. And I'm gonna make it more like 140. So 140 for our speed. Again, I do like to let the airplanes do a lot of the work, especially as we are approaching landing and stuff like that. It's important. There's normally two people in the real cockpit, but we're just one person. So we really need a little bit of time to let the airplane fly so that we can be all set. If we're on VATSIM, I'll usually look up at V pilot and see if there is a ground control. If there is a ground control frequency, by now we're talking to tower, I'm going to set that in my radio and have it ready to go. I'm also going to maybe remind myself of what gate we were talking about landing at. And now it's time to do the landing checklist. Landing gear is down. We have three green lights. The auto brake is set to low. Anti-skid is checked. Slats and flaps are 30 and 40. Spoilers are armed. The landing checklist is done. And we're doing pretty good. Now the airplane's gonna start getting a little wobbly on this as we get closer. AP is off. And on this airplane, you sometimes have to hit the button a second time. And it does not stay on your descent as you might, uh, uh, you know, uh, like, like a newer Airbus. You're gonna have to go and hit buttons. You're gonna have to set your trim. Flight directors are a little off. We'll get some help from that. Getting a little low on that flight director. I really like to use those now on the approach. 
You might hear the sound of the trim button as I use that. Now we're getting a little high. So the flight director is saying up, go back down. And at a certain point in time, I just stop doing all the trimming and, you know, fly with the stick. There we go. That's pretty close. Remember, it's offset, so we're ready to go and move. This airplane, I believe, will uh, automatically pull the throttles back on an ILS. You may need to do your own throttles. So we're at about 54% auto throttle is off. little low now. There's the offset. Do the turn. Little low, but that's okay. Oh, turned a little late. There we go. Reverse. And I'm just doing idle reverse on this airplane. You really don't need that much. I don't know how accurate that is, but wow. Manual braking and off on the high speed. Stow the reversers, speed brakes down, flaps going up. If we're on VATSIM, remember not to cross the uh, other runway. We remember we were gonna go to one of those big international gates. So off on the high speed there. Landing lights can go off. If you get a chance, APU start. Strobes can go off. Ah, I missed my turn a bit. This is not a payware airport. This is one of those uh, super duper, really nicely uh, enhanced uh, airports from um, from uh, um, uh, Asobo. So the thing to do here is to come on and uh, enjoy the scenery. Up, oh, hot brakes. Yeah, I, ta I tapped them a little bit, so we'll turn on the brake fans. After landing checklist, slats and flaps are up. Transponder is set to T, uh, TA only. Um, and let's see, weather radar is off, spoilers are retracted, the APU is started. And we're gonna slowly do our turn over here. And we're gonna go over to the big wide body gates. And look outside and enjoy the scenery, which is really just amazing. This, this one was nicely done for Nice. Okay, APU is starting. Let's also go ahead and I'm gonna to remember to turn off my probe heaters, unless we're in a blinding blizzard or something like that. If you're in a blinding blizzard or something, then maybe leave them on, but they get very, very hot and people work around the nose of the airplane. So I generally try to turn them off so we don't burn anybody. And around we come over here, then we've got the big wide body gates at the International Terminal, which I believe is Terminal 2 here at Nice. And we're kind of going slow here, but that's okay. We have nice views. Speed outside the airplane is six knots. So a little bit more might be good. Directly ahead, if you are flying cargo, is the cargo terminal. And it looks like they got about five or six places to park there too. So when uh, Anybuilds comes out with the A300 cargo variant that they're working on, uh, this will be a great place to go and uh, do a cargo run into uh, Nice. And here we are, we were looking for gate 44, so there is 40. And sometimes the numbers can change on you quick. Up there's 42, 
44 may be next after that. Yep, there's 40, 44. So there's our gate. And it even says so on the paint, which is really nice. So there's 44. And a nice gentle turn. This is also one of those airports where the flags also are flapping in the correct direction, which is great. And you see the big round terminal ahead there. And again, if you're just nice and gentle with this turn, you should be fine. You may need to add a little more power, especially if you have to make a 90 degree turn. But as soon as you start making that turn, be sure and pull the throttles back. Otherwise you're coming in to the gate at warp factor 10 and that's no good. Uh, we're starting to get better gate guidance coming in, which is nice. Uh, I don't see any here. So one of the things to do is as you're all lined up, come on down here and you can come out and get yourself all nicely set up. There's our stop point right there. And just gently right up to the gate like a pro. And stop. Parking brakes are on. APU we already know is up. We're gonna stop one engine. Stopping the other engine, APU generators got us. So we can also come up here and do the uh, beacon is off. We should have turned off the nose light coming in. Seat belts need to go off. Let's disarm the emergency exit lights. We'll turn on the APU bleed. And we got a whole lot of fuel pumps. Remember to leave at least one up uh, for that APU until ground power gets plugged in. And so all of this is good. We'll stop squawking. So transponder to standby. So that's gonna be good too. We should have turned off uh, terrain radar and radar as we were coming, uh, getting off the runway. And then you can come over here to the plug. I'm gonna put my chocks in place. I'm gonna request ground power. I'm gonna go to bulk, aft and forward cargo come outside the airplane. Let's activate GPS, GSX. Activate the GPS, GSX. And there's GSX and we can operate the jetway. And here comes our jetway. And it will open the door and life will be good. This is also an airport where it's probably a good idea to come over here and grab your drone camera. And we can come over here and I'm going a little fast so it'll be a little shaky, but you can see that the door is open. Oh, look at that. They've also opened the jetway door. So come over here. Here's a little uh, uh, drone cam stuff. Come over to the drone and go down to about two or three. Okay, so that's good. And with that, you can come on over here. Up oh, there's the guy and come around here. The jetways are getting better and better uh, in the sim. So if you want, you can kind of go and walk down the jetway, which is nice. Here's another door. And I'll bet this is one of those terminals that's been uh, enhanced. The insides of terminals are getting better and better and better all the time. And so there's that little uh, part, part of the jetway where you kind of go over there over the uh, traffic lanes. And let's see if we can actually go inside this terminal. Nope, you can't do th this one, I don't think. Yep, so you can't do this one. I wonder if we can come into this one. But the jetway is actually really nice. So jetways are getting better and better. Let's see if we can go into this big round area here. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Now, if this was a uh, payware airport, the payware airports are getting really, really good for that. So let's see if this will let us go into this area here. Looks like a big ticketing area. And let's see what happens. Almost, let's see what happens when we go through the grunt. Oh, look at that, we can. So this area has actually been modeled and more and more of these actually are. Hmm, there's the coffee place. I'll have mine with an uh, extra shot of uh, Humiliation Baileys today. And how about that? We made it. So, uh, aside from hitting a uh, live button instead of a record button, you really can recover from a lot of mistakes 
uh, when you're doing uh, flights like this. And now is the point where I always will say things like, look, the videos that I do here on YouTube are mostly designed for people that are new into the flight sim world. Uh, so it's is not about the right way versus the wrong way. This is simply what works for me. And today's flight kind of worked pretty good. I'm still really new here on YouTube. So uh, I uh, do read all the questions and the comments. One of them came in, would I please you know, put uh, information about the flight at the beginning up? You'll see that one there, so thank you for that. Also, I'll say please, if you feel like it, head on over to uh, Twitch. Join us on the spy flight we fly every day at 1900 Zulu, and that is uh, Tuesday through Sunday. Last thing I'll do is come on over here and uh, take a quick look. This was our flight down and let's go to the statistics page and you can see my landing rate was zero minus 53. Yeah, I did do a little bit of floating coming in here. Let's see if I bounced. Was it a 53 bounce? Not really. No, it was not a bounce here. We did go a little bit down the runway though. If we come over here, I think we can kind of tilt it a bit on the runway. So yeah, we actually did float a little bit here. There's the touchdown zone. I'll take a little bit of a float for a nice landing rate. A nice landing rate always makes the day a little bit better. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that some of this helps you. I will look forward to seeing you again in about a week over uh, here on YouTube. I will see you very soon on Twitch. If you liked what you saw, of course, likes, uh, and shares are appreciated. If you really liked it, come on over, drop a sub on Twitch, or if you like, there is also a new Patreon page. Links are in the description, of course. Uh, so links are in the description too. Thank you for flying. I hope you are having a great week this week, and we'll see you in the friendly sim skies. Cheers.